Well, the ominous tech monopoly Google recently announced it will not work with the U.S. Pentagon on a defense project due to ethical concerns. That problem has not arisen as they work hard to build a censored search engine to help the fascist Chinese government repress its own people. But private messages from Google employees obtained by this program show Google's refusal to help national defense in this country may be for the best. In 2016, shortly after the presidential election, a one-time Google employee called Brian Klimt wrote this, quote, if the government wants a company to build some software for unethical purposes, we should volunteer to do it. I'd gladly take project management responsibility for such a thing. I promise the deadlines will slip for decades and will never produce anything remotely functional. In other words, he would sabotage it. A Google engineer called Javier Estevez responded by linking to a CIA document giving tips for, quote, simple sabotage. Another engineer called Gary Boyer seemed to like the idea but lamented their strategy would have to remain hidden. Estevez and Boyer still work at Google. We reached out to the company, which commented this way, quote, what employees say in their personal capacity has no bearing on the way we build or operate our products. They didn't apologize. They didn't explain. Meanwhile, Twitter announced yesterday it won't be banning or even suspending Louis Farrakhan after he made a post that compared Jews to termites. As we've often noted, we don't have a problem with free speech. We support it strongly. We just wish Twitter would extend the same courtesy to people who aren't Democratic stalwarts like Louis Farrakhan. Last month, Twitter took part in the coordinated purge of Alex Jones and Infowars for multiple online platforms. Twitter suspended many other accounts for reasons it won't fully explain, but which appear to be political. We're against that, of course. The question is, can Gong Congress do something about it as well? Congressman Jim Jordan represents Ohio, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks very much for coming you on. You bet. Before I ask you about Twitter, I want to ask you what you make of these internal messages from Google that show Google yeah. employees it's apparently joking about sabotaging a defense, yeah. a Department of Defense project. What does that tell you about how they view the U.S. government and this well, country? It, it shows you how ridiculous the left has become. Limit conservative speech, sabotage national defense, allow anti-Semitic language on your platforms, but restrict conservative speech. I mean, the left, I mean, think, I said this the other day, the left will applaud uh, Colin Kaepernick when he disrespects the flag. They'll cheer on Cuomo when he says America's never that great. And they'll applaud uh, Maxine Waters when she says go out and harass people who support the president. And yet they uh, allow Louis Farrakhan speech, but restrict conservatives. I mean, th this is this is the ridiculous level we have now gotten to, the absurd level I think we've now gotten to in this country, and it's unfortunate. Well, it's certainly dark, that's for sure. So Twitter um, it, it is the portal through which a lot of people get their news. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not just a social medium. It's an important part of our, um, of our news landscape, and they are obviously political in the way they censor. Does Congress yeah. have a role in that? Well, I, I think they are political. You know, there are 435 members of the, of the House, 100 members of the Senate, 535. This summer, four got shadow banned. Uh, Devin Nunes, Matt Gates, Mark Meadows, and Jim Jordan. Four conservative members of the House. Hey. And, of course, CEO Jack Dorsey said, well, it was just a problem, just a glitch in our algorithm. I mean, think about that. So what did you put in the algorithm? The names Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan? I mean, come on. There is no way that is the answer. So this is, this is where we've got... Tucker, we're doing a series of hearings on the First Amendment and the Oversight Committee. And at our most recent one, I asked this college professor, who's a witness for the Democrats, I asked this college professor, I said, on a college campus safe space, could I say this sentence, Donald Trump is president? He began his response with these words, it depends. And I interrupted him. I said, it depends. It's a fact. He got elected November 8, 2016. He was sworn in January 2017. He lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. There's no it depends about it. This is the level of absurdity right. the left is taking us to, and it is a direct attack on the First Amendment. But, I mean, these companies are more powerful in their technology than the U.S. government. The U.S. government has nothing as powerful as Google, nothing as close. They control right. our national conversation. They have a chokehold on all human information in English. 
So why doesn't the U.S. Congress see well, their clampdown on speech as a threat to all American citizens? I mean, can we do something about this, or do we stand I, idly by? No, I, I think you're right, but I think it's a, it's a multiple-step process, and we're at step one, which is we first need to understand how serious this problem is, how big it is. Is it every single social media platform? There are certainly lots of examples. You mentioned Google. We know what Twitter has done. We know what Jack Dorsey has said. So let's have the hearings. Let's get to the bottom of it. And then you're right. We may have to take action to protect the First Amendment and protect people's ability to speak out in a conservative fashion and not be hindered for doing so. Yeah, or a liberal fashion, but to speak. I mean, yeah. it's, the well, First Amendment right. doesn't mean anything if you can't exercise it. No, right. right. I mean, right. the, the, the First Amendment wasn't yeah. written just for speech we like. It was written for all speech. But right now, it doesn't seem... They, they allow liberal and, and they allow all kinds of crazy things to be said. As the Farrakhan example is such crazy language like that. But they're going to restrict conservatives and their ability to speak. It's just not right. And it's something we're going to have to look into. Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio, thank you very much. You bet. Thank you, Tucker.